everybody, Zach again, NewTutor.com, coming in making a video for you today. We're going to address an email from a guy named Trenton who said he's having a big problem with Galatians 3, chapter 3, verse 10. Now, just starting off, I have a whole playlist of Galatians videos that you can go watch on my website, NewTutor.com. It's on the main page, or you can go to YouTube, right here on YouTube at my main channel page, and find the playlist for those videos right there. Either way, you can find them, and I address most of the topics. I think I'm, I would think about almost all of the sticking points that people have with Galatians. Uh, Galatians is a big issue that people bring up when they're first coming into this understanding of Torah or when they're addressing concerns from their friends and family who discover that they're into this whole feast-keeping, diet-keeping, and Sabbath-keeping stuff that you're doing. They're like, what about Galatians, Galatians, Galatians? But Paul said, but Paul said, but Paul said... <laughs> So I've addressed most of these things in those videos. Uh, check them out. But this one, Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. Now, I have said often in my Galatians series or Paul videos that the way to understand Paul is really uh, about what he's talking about when it comes to the law. When Paul mentions or seems to mention doing away with the law, he's really talking about one of two things, sometimes both. One of two things, and that's either... Uh, the traditions and doctrines of man, man's law, the law that's not found anywhere in your Bible, the laws that man made up, like is referred to in Mark chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, when it says, Yeshua says to them, you, you elevate the traditions and doctrines of man over the commandments of God. You know, the washing of pots and all this silly stuff that's not found anywhere in your Bible. You know, okay, you're making man's law, law, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. So Paul's talking about that, number one, or he's talking about the, 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 the curse that the law brings when you break it. Because for believers, that curse, the, you know, the law of sin and death, that death, has the curse has been taken away by the Messiah, the blood paid by the Messiah. And so those two things, if you can understand that Paul's either talking about uh, the, the traditions and doctrines of man, man's law, or the curse the law brings when you break it, that those things, yes, have been taken away. Like, you know, when you, when you go through a red light, or a stop sign, and you are going to pay the fine either by getting in an accident or by a ticket that the police officer gives you when he pulls you over. See, there's a curse that comes with that when you disobey the law or you receive the blessings of obeying that law, meaning you are given safe travel from point A to point B. Blessings and curses, just like the Bible says. But see, when you pay the fine of running through that stop sign or red light or whatever when that cop pulls you over, it doesn't mean you're free from the law. You're free from the punishment the law gives, and that's what Paul says goes away, the punishment, the curse of the law. It's been done away with, not the law itself. Let's read the verse, and let's dive down a little bit deeper. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Now, understand that Paul is quoting directly from Deuteronomy 27. Let's read that verse. Deuteronomy 27, the last verse in the chapter, Cursed be he that confirms not in all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. So Deuteronomy 27 is talking about all the things you shouldn't do, you know, like incest, bestiality, stealing from your neighbor, all these things. Don't do this, don't do this, because if you do them, curses are going to come upon you. Okay, blessings and curses. And so Paul's talking about this. We know that the law says, cursed be everyone who does not do all the things that the law says they're in. Because the, when you break the law, it brings a curse. Just like it does, it brings you a curse when you disobey the traffic laws that you drive to from work every day. Stop lines, stop, si uh, stop signs, stop lights, whatever. You're cursed when you wake up in your hospital bed and realize that you should have stopped at that red light. <laughs> does that make sense? It's the same thing when you go through life and you realize, you know, I really shouldn't have lied to my neighbor. You know, I really shouldn't have, you know, I don't know, slept with his wife because he beat me over the head with a crowbar and now I'm in the hospital. Curses come with disobedience. Um, and so it's the same thing today. Okay, what he's not saying is that the law is a curse. Let's read one of the verses in this chapter that people often confuse. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Er, full stop. This is where Christian pastors and ministers will get up and say, See, we're free from the law. It's a curse. We don't need to do that anymore. Feel free to go home and have your ham sandwich. That's not what it's saying. It's saying that we're free. you're free as a believer from the punishment that breaking the law brings. 
you know, there was a fine that you couldn't pay. But someone you don't even know in the back of the courtroom stands up and says, Your Honor, I'll pay that fine for him. I'll pay that. See, that person back there is Yeshua. Because you have a debt that cannot be paid from your own pockets. Can't do it. So he stands up and says, I got this one. And now you're free from the law. You're free from the law because that law brings curse and punishment. You're now free to walk out of that courtroom. The law, you, the law is now dead to you. You are dead to the law because it no longer holds dominion over your sin. You're free from sin. You're free from the punishment. That's what it's talking about. You know how I know my interpretation is correct? Let's go ahead and go to verse 15 of this chapter. Brothers, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannuls or adds thereto. You see, God made a covenant with man. He says, for you, I'm making this covenant. Here's the rules. Here's the law. Here's the things I'm saying. Here's how I'm telling you to live. How I'm telling you to live. Don't add or take away. Don't add or take away from this. Blessings and curses. But see, in Paul's day, you had the issue of these people going around and they're telling all of these believers, see, first you must show your works. You must prove to us that you're saved, that you have faith but by doing these works. And until you do these works, you're not saved. And Paul's saying, who has bewitched you? Why? No, no, no. Abraham first had faith and then proved his faith by his obedience. Genesis 26, verse 5, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. See, he did so because he believed. Okay, see, this is that analogy I give often on my channel about the parachute. You, get, you put that parachute on because you have faith in the parachute. Otherwise, you wouldn't put it on. And then you show your faith by getting on the plane. You show your faith by stepping through the door. And you show your faith ultimately by pulling the cord and deploying that parachute. Because if you didn't have full faith and trust in that parachute, you wouldn't put it on. You wouldn't get on the plane. You wouldn't jump out the door. And then you wouldn't pull the cord to deploy it. You, that shows your faith. Faith, true faith, true belief is followed by actions. But you can't do actions. We know we all know people in this world today who are saying they do believe in all these certain things, but really does their life reflect that? No, oftentimes it doesn't. And so you had people during Paul's day who were going around saying, hey, you need to first, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to be saved, you need to first show us. You need to do these actions first. And so you have people doing work salvation. That's why you have all these people out there saying, ah, the Hebrew roots, the Torah stuff, that's all a bunch of work salvation. No, it's not. The works comes after. You have salvation by faith first, then the works will be evident in your life. Because that's what shows true faith. Your actions do. So the whole Galatians, uh, Trenton, Chapter 3, verse 10. All he's doing is quoting from Deuteronomy uh, 27, verse 26. It's the last verse in that chapter. Go ahead and read that chapter of, of Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 27. To get a better ha handle on this, Paul is just upholding law. He's quoting directly from the Torah. And I know some people get confused about this. A lot of Christian pastors get confused because they don't know the Torah. They've never really studied this first. They don't read the beginning of the book. They start seminary at John chapter 1, verse 1. And they don't really understand that the New Testament is just a continuation of the Old Testament. You know, the very third, the last verse of the entire Old Testament before Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, says to remember the words of Moses, the commandments, the statutes. To remember, meaning don't forget. You think that's going to change three verses later when Matthew chapter 1, verse 1 starts? No. It's all a continuation. But so many people forget, forget this. Again, folks, if you want more information on Galatians, if you're having trouble with Galatians, or if you know someone who is, go ahead and check us out on our website, newtotorah.com, or just search for New Tutorial Galatians or Zachary Bauer Galatians. You can find it on the playlist on my YouTube channel page as well. All right, guys, we'll leave it at that. Go home. Read your Bible. Thanks.